This video looks at parallel and perpendicular gradients. Now we've come across this form of the straight line before, y equals mx plus c. This form of the equation is probably the most useful because it tells us both the main characteristics of our equation of the line. Now if we don't have it in the form y equals mx plus c, we need to use what we've done before with equations and changing the subject of the formula to get the information we want, namely the gradient m and the y-intercept c. So like I said, if we don't have this, the rules of equations mean we balance both sides and eventually we will get y equals everything else. And it's best to write it in mx plus c form first, so that x term is first and then the individual numbers at the end. Now, a couple of things we need to remember. For parallel lines, if we have lines L1 and L2, the gradients, say M1 and M2, are going to be equal. However, this is new. For perpendicular lines, which is where two lines are separated by a right angle, the gradients will multiply to minus 1. So M1 times M2 equals minus 1. Now we want to do as few calculations as possible and any unnecessary calculations we want to avoid. So do not calculate the value of a gradient as a decimal. It's much, much easier to keep it as a fraction. Let me show you why. If, for example, we have, uh, let's say, one gradient equals, I should say one, come on, one. Ah, never mind, let's do it again. Right. Huh. Ah, well, there we go. It's a proper one. Let's say m1 equals 3 over 5. What we do to get the second gradient is we invert that fraction and change the sign. So that will become minus 5 over 3. Even with a whole number, let's start with m1 equals, let's say, minus 6. m2 inverted. Now, that could be minus 6 over 1. So this is going to be plus 1 over 6. Now, the main thing you must remember, state m1, m2 equals minus 1. Without that, there is no point doing this working to get the second gradient. You must do m2, m1, m2 equals minus 1. Right, so let's show you how it's done. We've got to write down the gradient of this line, 5x plus 4y equals 12. We need to get it in the form y equals mx plus c. That's the best thing to do. So, we want the 4y term on its own. Let's take 5x from both sides. So we get minus 5x plus 12. And then we'll divide through by 4. So minus 5 over 4 is our gradient. Because that's the coefficient of x. We don't need to write 12 over 4 because we know 12 over 4 is 3. Now, it says write down the gradient. We've just written the, the equation here. So we need to say m equals minus 5 over 4. That is our answer. Now you can see there's some questions from the textbook you can have a go at now that you've seen this worked example. Now with a question like this, we're given the gradient of a line. So let's say m1 equals 3 quarters, because that's the coefficient of x. We know m1, m2 equals minus 1. Therefore, and that's what we have to write, m1, m2 equals minus 1. Therefore, m2 equals minus 4 over 3. That's the new gradient, or the perpendicular gradient. Okay, there are some questions on the bottom of this slide to have a go at. Enjoy!